Hi everybody, it's November 15, 2018. I am not feeling very well and I have a sore throat. I hope to post another video tonight and you will see what has been going on here in Anderson, South Carolina. A lot of people are sick, a lot of people have sinus infections, um, and a lot of people are quite depressed and anxious. What a surprise. Well, I say that sarcastically. So I want to just post some information on the fires, what's happening to the survivors. And I'm going to start with this. ISIS group claims California wildfires are retribution vows. You will see more fires. This was posted today or yesterday, I'm sorry, on um, PJ Media. <laughs> I was looking at the J and I couldn't remember how to pronounce J. Whoa. Yeah, well, a lot of you have been writing that you are not quite okay. Your cognitive deficits seem to be increasing. Uh, one of the many media groups supporting ISIS operations online claimed that the deadly wildfires in Northern and Southern California are retribution for coalition bombings in Syria. Oh, by the way, did you know that Trump killed, oh God, just this past year, thousands of innocent civilians just in Raqqa, Syria. A lot of kids too. A lot of children. Oh, America, this is the punishment of bombing Muslims in Syria. Uh, Syria was pretty much a secular country. And while they certainly do have Muslims there, they also have a lot of Christians in Syria. Anyway, I guess, I guess when you're a member of a group, you tend to only care about members of the group. Anybody else who dies, well, too bad. Um, this is Allah's punishment for you. And inshallah, you will see more fires. Praise be to Allah. The campfire in Butte County, north of Sacramento in California's Gold Rush country has claimed the lives of... No, it's actually up to 56. 56 with over 200 missing. 7,600 residences, 260 commercial buildings destroyed, and 35% contained still. 135 acres. Still. Let me make sure that that's correct. The last update was just a few minutes ago and now it's 40% contained at 140,000 acres. No, sorry. That article was wrong. It is 8,756 residences destroyed. 260 commercial buildings destroyed. Businesses. The town is essentially wiped out. The fire remained active overnight. Um, they're not, they're not mentioning anything about high winds. So, yeah, ISIS. <laughs> well, PG and E, many are blaming PG and E for their downed power lines and their sparking wires. But, unfortunately, an awful lot of Americans don't understand that ISIS was created by the United States, Israel, Britain, Saudi Arabia, funded, supported, CIA trained. It is our proxy terrorist organization. Isn't that unfortunate? In fact, ISIS has a magazine 
and it is very, uh, well, professional looking, glossy looking. Isn't it interesting? These terrorists can find the money to produce such fabulous publications and oh my god jihadists were advised to time their arson preferably in the later part of night to the early hours of morning when people are generally asleep instructions were offered on how to block off exits to inflict casualties so isn't it great voila you create these terror groups and then you give them these glossy magazines and then they print articles about how they're going to be starting fires in the United States even detailing when they will start them how they're going to block off exits so they inflict more casualties we have those kinds of fires and we can blame it on ISIS it's right there for them to blame the bullshit that Americans believe it's un unbelievable and thousands are spending another day without a home this afternoon I apologize for that that's a wee bit too loud the shelter so packed that some people are camping in a Walmart parking lot Reporter Alyssa Becerra is in Butte County at another makeshift shelter. And I still think that's a little bit too loud. So, unfortunately, we now have, when you think about mm, how many residences, uh, 8,756, I think, you can average three people per home. That's an awful lot of people homeless now. Where are they going to go? What are they going to do? Most Americans now live paycheck to paycheck. The donations that Red Cross and Google are collecting, they're not filtering down to the survivors. What are they going to do? Well, hopefully many have friends and family that have taken them in, supporting them through this horrific experience. Many are elderly and will not be able to recover. And the stress of having lost everything at an old age, the stress will kill them sooner than, than they would have died had they not had this experience. I'm here in the Lowe's parking lot in Chico where people have actually set up shop their home away from home after they evacuated a week ago today. They've got campers, they've got tents. Many of them say they had no idea what was coming when they evacuated last Thursday. But they're survivors. Jim survived Vietnam, a cancer scare, and now the fire. Walked out on the porch, seen a red glow in black, and that was it. They told us to get that out, and we just threw stuff in the truck and got out. Close friends, family lost their homes, and um, ours is still standing. Everything burned around the fence, and the house is still there. So we have a place to go back to. But Susie, Jim, and Sheila say humor has definitely made a difference. <laughs> we all have. It, it helps your soul. <laughs> It's been very difficult for these people. Many of them, however, have forged friendships that are helping them get through all of this. In Chico, Elisa Becerra, KPIX 5. And to make matters worse, we have just learned from health officials that 21 fire survivors staying in a shelter at the neighborhood church in Chico have contracted the norovirus. Wow, that's right. So, a lot of people sick. They lost everything. Now they're sick, something in the air, 
Norovirus outbreak confirmed at California wildfire shelter. And it's not just one shelter. It happens to be a lot of shelters. I think four. And we have, oh, come on, I, I computers. More than 140 campfire evacuees, evacuees at shelters have had norovirus. Some are acutely ill. Um, so of the 140 campfire evacuees at four different shelters, 41 are still experiencing symptoms. Several have had to go to the hospital. So it's 21 people staying at Neighborhood Church in Chico, 31 at Oroville Church of the Nazarene, 9 at Butte County Fairgrounds, and 1 at East Avenue Church in Chico had symptoms. Uh, I did get a comment last night from a subscriber who was telling me that people who had evacuated to Oroville had the norovirus, so I'm not sure if the norovirus made its way to Oroville as well. Because here we have Oroville Church, so I think the Oroville Church, is it in Oroville or is it in Chico? Not sure, because all of the articles on this outbreak of this norovirus, which is highly contagious, it's a stomach virus, you can have um, high temperatures with uh, aches and pains, diarrhea, and severe stomach pain. Isn't it great? Don't you have to kind of wonder? <laughs> I love my computer about how this outbreak occurred. I do. I do. Um, I do want to bring your attention to this video that I just received from a subscriber in the comments section. This is the reason why I had that uh, high volume, I forgot to turn it down because this volume is quite low. Hey, I'm Kevin John here in Chico. I'm at one of the sites where a lot of the survivors from the campfire have come to seek temporary shelter and food and resources and stuff like that. But as of this morning, they woke up to this sign right here saying that they have to evacuate the premises Sunday by 1 p.m. Clothing will be removed Friday afternoon. Food will be phasing out. Lights and bathrooms will be gone Sunday. And the site will close by 1 p.m. Sunday. The good news is that they are providing lots of resources here to get the survivors out and get them to other places of shelter, food, and things of that sort, but they still have to figure out how to transition and get this many people out by Sunday at 1. Well, where are they going? Where are they going? To other shelters? What I have heard and what I've read is that the shelters are full. Where are they going? Anyone in Chico, could you please, could you go down and try to find out where are they taking these people? The good news is they have resources to transition. To transition to what? That is what I would like to know. <laughs> So I also want to bring your attention to the uh, California Attorney General site. And I'm not going to play this video, but uh, Diggy Do It actually called the Attorney General's office, tried to uh, set up an appointment to speak with the Attorney General. I'm not sure he lives in California. I don't think the Attorney General is going to be uh, calling anybody back that does not live in California, but Californians. You can 
you can file an environmental complaint. You have the right to talk to your attorney general. All of you who know about the geoengineering, the aluminum, the barium, strontium, uh, lithium, all of the incendiary substances that are being sprayed into your atmosphere that makes these fires more explosive, you can contact your attorney general and tell your attorney general that you want your attorney general to look into that. You want your attorney general to investigate, investigate all of the anomalies that you are seeing. How is it that these fires, well, the one in paradise, 24 hours and it took out 87 plus homes, 260 commercial buildings. How does that happen? Unprecedented. You have heard your fire officials use that word. This is unprecedented. So you want an investigation. <sighs> All right, I look at this. Look at all of these garbage cans. They weren't even blown over. All right. I do want to also um, bring your attention to, well, in one of the videos that I've watched, I see one woman who was going down the streets in paradise, reading off the street names so that people who can't get back to paradise can learn whether or not their home is there or not, which is a very uh, valuable service to an awful lot of people who no longer have transportation to get down. There's an awful lot of people who are still evacuees that don't know whether or not they have a home left. But as she drives through, you will see the devastation. You will see the trees. They're perfectly fine. The pine trees, perfectly fine. But the home's gone. Look at this. The home's flattened and all of the trees around it fine but I did think it was very interesting this first shot of these garbage cans which can't get back to it um, look at all of look at all of the cars burnt out and right beside pine trees that go up in seconds, in seconds. This is so heartbreaking, I can't tell you. And I, I do want to say, that it really is very difficult to go on when you have lost everything and you can't get it back. It is so painful. And you, after a while, it's like just hanging on. You're hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. That gets very, very tiring, very exhausting. And the older you get, the harder it is. So what's going to happen to all of these elderly people who have lost their homes? I sure wish that we were just a nation of people who would rally around and help one another because there are going to be so many people with each event, you know, that takes place. There are going to be so many people who won't make it, just won't make it. 
I'll end with this very short six second video if it ah this was passed along to me look I can't verify that this is actually aluminum dust I don't it's a video but watch what happens whoa sorry about that aluminum dust burning aluminum dust aluminum particles Wow. One more time. Wow. It ignites. And I can't believe that that guy is just holding the flame torch and he's not moving away. I really just I hope to God. more and more and more and more and more people come to their aid. Um, here are all of the stats as of 1.21 p.m. on the norovirus in Butte County shelters. Staff as well, not just the evacuees, not just the survivors, but staff trying to help the survivors have come down with the norovirus. The number of sick people is increasing every day. 25 people have been brought to the hospital. Staff getting sick. The outbreak has been identified and confirmed as the norovirus, highly contagious. They're bleaching the floors in the shelter, um, sanitizing everything, and there is no vaccine. There's no medication to get rid of the virus. And most people who get sick are sick from one to three days. Get better without medical support. Seniors and young people, however, are more vulnerable, may get dehydrated. Wow. Well, guys, a whole lot is going on. All links are below.